Welcome back once again to the Witcher Math channel. Math is just everywhere and it never stops. So I'm getting close to 200 videos, but there's no end in sight. It's everywhere. Today we're going to work on using your mental math skills to do something crazy like this, to be able to change a fraction to a decimal with no calculator. Okay? And it's not as hard as it sounds. In fact, it's just as easy as it sounds. Let's start with a money example. Everybody loves money. It's a good connection to make. I think you would all agree that uh, four quarters equals a dollar, right? Okay, let's translate this into, these are each quarters, right? And a dollar, you would agree that that is 100 cents. I hope you'd agree that, okay? Cent means 100, okay, like century, centipede, centimeter, all those words that start with cent, cent represents 100 of something, 100 years, 100 feet on a centipede, 100 centimeters in a meter. So, um, one quarter is how many cents? 25 cents, or 25 out of 100, right? Each one of these quarters is the same as 25 cents. Okay, 100 cents. So, out of 100. So if I say something like, each quarter is worth 25 cents, Another way of saying 25 cents is that, right? 25 cents, or 25 out of 100. So, that means this. One quarter equals 25 cents. And it also means, I'm going to take that a step further. Switch colors here. It also means, not only is one quarter 25 cents, but two quarters is 50 3 is 75, and of course, 4 is 100 cents. You're probably thinking, duh, I already knew that. And I'm thinking, I hope so, and I'm going to use that to make a connection for you. Okay, what this means is that 25 and 4 are factors of 100. And if you can find two factors, any two factors of 100, they're going to share this same relationship, which is simply each one of these equals 25 hundredths, and it works the other way around, too. Each one of these is worth that many out of 100. I like to think of this as a reciprocal relationship, even though they're adding to 100 multiplying to 100 instead of 1. See how 25 and 4 are connected? Each quarter is worth 25 cents, and if we flip that the other way around, each 1 25th is worth 4 cents, right? Okay. I hope you agree. Let's go on to uh, take this money example somewhere else. Let's take it a step farther. Let's say Right, 5 times 20 is 100, right? So why don't we use that same logic we just had, and let's go, well, if, if each one of those equals one of those, then each one of these should equal that, right? Because those are the two numbers that multiply to get 100. So we can think of this as each... One fifth equals twenty one hundredths, but then also the opposite is true, or the inverse is true. Each one twentieth is worth five cents, right? It takes twenty nickels to make a dollar. Okay, so twenty and five are another example of this family. So what this means is. If you're given a fraction like this, 3 20ths, 
and told to make it a decimal, well, you could do it the old-fashioned way. You could do long division. You could use a calculator. Or you could remember that 20 times 5 is 100. So each one of these is worth 5 cents. So that's going to be 15. 15 hundredths, right? Each 20th is worth 5. So 3 20ths is worth 15, or 3 times 5, or 15 hundredths. Does that make sense? Let's find another pair of factors whose product is 100. Okay? How about... Oh, what about 9 and 11? It's 99, right? That's close to 100. So this becomes a way of estimating very valuable skill. It doesn't exactly equal 100, but it's as close as you can get with whole numbers, right? So this means that each one ninth is worth 11 hundredths, and each one eleventh is worth what? Right, nine out of a hundred. Okay, they share, they have that relationship is that they're factors of 99, right? So each one ninth is worth slightly more than that. So we put a vinculum over it because the one would be repeating. Okay, does that make sense? So if we said something like estimate five elevenths as a decimal, we would just go, oh, 5 times 9 is 45. Repeating. Bam. Because I got the 9 from here, knowing that 9 and 11 have that relationship, I'm going to use the other number as a multiplier. Let's do one more. How about 5 ninths? <clears throat> Estimate. I'm using the word estimate because it's not exactly 100, okay? As a decimal, that's going to be 5 times 11, right? Because 9 and 11 are the factors. So that's going to be 55. But the 5 is going to repeat, and we write it like that. So far, so good. Let's do a couple more examples. In fact, I'm going to give you a couple of samples to do all by yourself. Okay. Um, 7 times 14 equals 98. Check it out on your calculator. It's true. I wouldn't lie to you. But more importantly, even though it's not exactly 100, this allows us to estimate. And estimating is really the kind of math we do out in the real world when you're at a store Dealing with numbers, you don't have a calculator. Okay, so if we're going to estimate as decimals using mental math, do, 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 mental math, this means each one seventh is worth a little more, right? Because we need a little more to get to 100, a little more than 14 hundredths. And you go ahead and say it. What am I going to say next? Right. Each one fourteenth is worth a little more than seven hundredths. So I'm going to give you a chance to do a couple of problems here. What is, let's do 9 fourteenths, and let's do 3 sevenths. Estimate the decimals. Mentally, no calculators. Go! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, 
each fourteenth is worth a little more than seven hundredths. So sixty three hundredths. About because we're estimating <clears throat> this means about. Or as they say in Canada, a boot. I think I think Mrs. Movridge says it that way too. You'll have to ask her about that because she's from Wisconsin. Okay. Anyway, let's take our three sevenths. Each one seventh is worth a little more than fourteen hundredths. So three times fourteen. Right? There's our little family. Those are our little factors. So that's going to be a little more than 42 hundredths. Get it? Get it? Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap it up. We're running long. You're not watching now anyway. So I'm just going to finish this up because nobody's watching. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure this is the good stuff. Here's some other pairs that work. Right? Once you know this system, you want to be prepared for every situation. So, for example, 8 times 12, 96. 8 and 13, 104. Look, exactly in between there is 100. So, exactly in between there is 12 and a half. So, 8 and 12 and a half work. Okay, that means each one eighth is worth twelve and a half one hundredths. Right? Here's the hundredths, there's the half of another hundredth, right? And each twelve and a half is worth eight hundredths. Right? What this means is if I have two twelve and a halves, then I'm going to have this, which is the same as saying four twenty fifths, right? Four quarters, which we already knew. Okay. Four twenty fifths. One more. One more. Don't go away yet. 6 times 17, 6 times 16. We're close to 100, close to 100. Which one do you use, right? We have to make a choice. Well, it's 2 thirds closer to 102, which means it's 2 thirds of the way closer to 17. What this means is each one sixth is worth almost seventeen hundredths. So if I said, hey, what's uh what's three, four, five, let's go five six. Five six estimate. Well, that would be five times that, which ends up getting me that, okay? I think that's going to do it for us. Are we good? So, back to our money example to wrap this up. It all comes back to the money, right? If you believe that each one-fourth equals 25 cents, the rest of this video should make perfect sense because we're going to do the same thing. Any two numbers that multiply to make 100 or even close to 100 can be used to estimate decimals. No calculator needed. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more excitement and cool drawings.